I'm Mark. I will now give you a brief overview over the new rules of New Shores. New Shores is a really big expansion. It features 24 new main species and three new biomes. And these biomes and new species bring new mechanics to the game. And we will now have together a look at all these new mechanics so that you can learn the game. So let's have a look at the rules of New Shores. So first here on the first page you see the contents overview and then let's go on the second page there we have the game preparation. Um, I think everything here is um, like explained in detail so I think I don't have to mention here more than what's already written here. Um, what I want to mention is this part here which is very important. Um, so there are Vivarium species now in the game, these are tiles and it's important that the number of player determines how many of these tiles are in play. So please have a look um, because no, it's important that not always all 48 tiles are in the game. And um, everything else here should be clear then, and that's important. In general, Zu Tycoon stays Zu Tycoon. There are some mechanical changes, but like the turnover is exactly the same as in the base game. But there are three small exceptions that um, you should keep in mind and that are also mentioned here on the last page in red so that you still can use like the last page of the rulebook as the game overview. So what are these three changes to the turnover? Um, to, the, to the turnover, to the general feel of the game, so how the game plays. So first it's important that in the first summer um, like um, like with the base game, there was like the giant panda and the Asian elephant that you couldn't take. And it's the same with the polar bear. So the polar bear can be taken in the first round. The second adjustment to the play of the game is that after the building phase in autumn, there is now the vivarium phase. In this vivarium phase, player can buy vivarium species. And then we have the last adjustment, and that's an adjustment to the end of the game. In the end of the game, after the, the minus points of the offspring discs that are still in your enclosures, after you have subtracted these minus points from your popularity points, you add between zero and three popularity points from the Vivarium. We will have a look at this a bit later in this video, but these are the three changes that are important. So now let's have a look at these mechanical changes in the game. So first what you see here on page 4 is everything that is new in the game. Um, the one big part that is new are there are three new biomes. So we now have dry forest, it has this reddish look. We have this whitish light greenish look, that's tundra or steppe. And then we have water. Um, these two, um, dry forest and tundra, work exactly the same like savanna, rainforest um, or bo uh, montane forest in the base game. Water works a bit differently because it causes running costs and uh, we will have a precise look at water in some minutes. What is also new is that some species have selectable biomes. So let us have a look at this. Um, the best example for something like this or um, for the selectable biomes are the puma and the South American top here. The puma is very versatile because um, as you can see here, it can live in four different biomes. So it can live in the montane forest, in the rainforest, in the dry forest or in the tundra. So when you um, take the puma, um, it's not required that you already determine um, which biome you will place um, it in, but it's impo um, it, um, it gets important when you place it. When you place it, then you can decide, is this now for you a montane forest species, or is this a rainforest species, or a dry forest, or a tundra species. And the same is true for the South American um, top here. It's not as versatile as the puma. So here, for example, it's only dry forest or rainforest. And but I mean at least it has now two different biomes of which you can now choose. So you can either place um, the South American top here like this, so in a dry forest enclosure, or you could place it like this in a rainforest enclosure. Um, it's important you still can't make a mix, so you can't make a mix out of um, dry forest and rainforest, that's not possible. It still has to be one biome like this, and um, it's also important that um, when you now placed it, it now only counts as a rainforest species. So for example, for education booths 
or um, food booths or gift shops for all these um, buildings that are, have uh, effects that are connected to the biome, it's important that this species is now solely uh, a rainforest species. So no dry forest. The dry forest is now completely ignored. It's now only rainforest. What is also important or a, a new possibility is that even some core species have now two dam biomes. So for example here you have the white-nosed coati and it is a dry forest species but you can also place it as a rainforest species. For example like this, right? It's important that during the game it's still not possible that you have uh, a quality two times in your zoo. So um, even if you have what if you would integrate it once as a rainforest species and one as a dry forest species that this is still not possible. So every species you can only have one time in your zoo. And yeah that's all um, I want to say about the selectable biomes. So now let us have a short look um, on the rule book again. So here um, we talk about new categories, so there are new categories, animal categories in the game. Um, of these only reptile has a, a, a distinct change in mechanics and uh, we will have a look at the reptiles in some minutes. Then here there are a few details mentioned about the new conservation project, very simple um, you should directly understand it. Um, so now let's, have a, now let's have a look at the neutral education booth, but that, because that's definitely a bit of a change um, from the base game to the um, expansion. So let us go back here, for example. So what, are, um, so what is different now with the um, education booths? So um, if you, um, maybe you remember that um, before, it was like this, that um, the education booths always were a combination of two biomes. So for example, one was a combination of rainforest and montane forest. But now we have six different biomes in the game and this would uh, lead to a lot of different education booths with a ton of different, like 15 different combinations of biomes. And that would make it way too complicated um, for us, but also for you. So um, let's keep it easy um, and that's um, why we um, have now these neutral education booths. These neutral education booths, they don't have a, a depicted um, biome here. So from the beginning, from the start, they are just neutral. So when you place one, it's still not determined if this, um, what biomes um, are uh, affected by this um, education booth. So, um, what, um, so you place it and once you now placed it, um, it's now determined what it is. So this one is a rainforest education booth. There is still space for a second, um, uh, for, ex for example, if I would place this dry forest enclosure here, of course with species in it, now it would be determined what this is. This is a rainforest dry forest education booth. And in your zoo, um, as in the base game, there still can't be a second education booth with the same combination. So it's still only possible to have one rainforest, dry forest education booth in your zoo. That it's a possible, for example, to have a, another one that would be dry forest and tundra, or another one that would be rainforest and savanna. But still, you can't have the same combination twice in your zoo. And what with this, um, it also makes the game a bit more forgiving or a bit more easier or simpler because when you place it, you don't have to determine in advance what it is. So you still can change it. So for example, if I place it, like this and now um, I don't have to say what it is and so it makes it a bit easier because in the base game it would already be determined that this is rainforest and savanna and this makes it a bit more complicated for you. But now you can during the game flexible, you are flexible and can still decide oh okay I want to place dry forest here and now this is a dry forest rainforest education booth. What is important? When you um, use a construction action, so for example, you would use a construction action and replace this booth. So you will place it from here to here. So now this education booth is, again, um, is still a rainforest education booth, but it's no longer a dry forest education booth. So these education booths can even still change the biomes after they were placed, right? So it's definitely a bit more forgiving that the base game education booths and uh, yeah, will help you a bit when developing your zoo. So let's go a bit further in the rule book.
So now we had a look at page five. Now let's go to page six. And as mentioned before, now we will have a close look at the reptiles. Because in the expansion of um, Zoo Tycoon, we finally have some reptiles in the game. Um, we have four different reptiles. So we have the saltwater crocodile, we have the Komodo dragon, we have the Galapagos tortoise, and let me search for it. We also have the green sea turtle. So these are the four main species reptiles that we have in the game and they all work a bit differently than all, than all the other um, animal categories. So how are they differently? Um, so if you have a close look at the animal cards, there are two details that you can spot um, where you can spot their difference. So here um, the retreat looks a bit different because um, animal um, reptiles don't use retreats, they use um, reptile houses like this because it's warm inside and they need a lot of heat. And then the second thing that you can see is here you don't have offspring discs and um, so that means that um, reptiles lay eggs like this. And um, I will go in the, um, now in detail with all the um, with both these new components and explain them to you a bit further. Um, so, what is the difference exactly? The difference is that if we take all this away, so first let's have a look at the let's have a look at the. Um, the reptile houses. So when you place, for example, a Komodo dragon in its enclosure, like this, then um, if you have a look at the card, then you see now here that um, it's still, I mean, everything works still the same. It can be placed alone. Um, it needs at least one free space. This would even be two free spaces. And now you see here is something different. It needs one um, reptile house. And this reptile house, what it may, um, what makes it different? So um, it um, costs three money, not two money, like the normal retreat. And you don't place it on top of the enclosure tiles, but besides it. So you place it directly on the zoo board. It's important that on all of these squares there can, can only be one reptile house. So it's not possible to um, place a second reptile house here. It's also not possible to place the reptile on top of the reptile house. It's also not possible to place a, um, a, like a focal point on top of the reptile house. So the reptile house is here and there is nothing placed on top of it. It's also important that um, you can also build it like this. So it's like a connection. So the Komodo dragon could go through this. So this is looked at as one enclosure. And um, it's also important that um, when you have, for example, building effects like the education booth, for example, then this counts as the part of the enclosure. So this works. If you place it here, it works. It's not like this, that if you place it like he, um, here and now it wouldn't work because this isn't an enclosure tile. So see this as like a merge between enclosure tiles and retreat. And um, yeah, it's part of an enclosure. It's also important that, for example, if we now would place here a second enclosure of the saltwater crocodile, then um, the saltwater crocodile, um, and um, it's important the saltwater crocodile has a bit of a different, but the enclosure, it's bigger and it also has water in it, but let's keep now the focus on the reptile house. It's also important that this reptile house only works for one enclosure, for the Komodo dragon. So the saltwater crocodile now still needs, as we see here, uh, a reptile house on its own. So a second one, right? So they don't share a reptile house. So uh, all the reptiles have their own reptile houses. So that's how the reptile houses work. And now we have a look at the second difference of the um, reptiles and these are the eggs and it works like this when you um, when we when it's off um, when it's spring you still roll the dice for offspring but now when you hit um, when you have a hit then um, you don't draw offspring discs 
from the offspring bag, but you draw eggs um, from, from the tuck box with all the eggs inside. And um, so for example, if I have a hit with the Komodo dragon, I take these two eggs and I place them into the enclosure, right? So you, I would place them like I did before. I would place them on an enclosure tile like this. And um, it's now important that, so why are these, uh, why are they different, right? And why the, are they not the normal offspring disc? Um, it's important, um, the, the main change is that they don't have a gender, they don't have a, a sex. Um, so, um, because with reptiles, it's like this, when they lay eggs, the, the, and the gender of the offspring is determined by t and the temperature. So you ca ca if you make the temperature higher or lower, this has an effect of, uh, on the um, gender of all the Komodo dragon offspring. So you can determine yourself what's um, this for you. So for example, if I want to integrate it in the enclosure, I can um, change I can change into a normal meeple and I can determine if it's a female or if, if, if it's a male. It's the same when you want to give them away in summer on the animal exchange. So if there, for example, is, um, is a demand for male Komodo dragons, then you can simply say, okay, these are male Komodo dragons and you can give them away. So it's uh, um, absolutely up to you as what you want to give them away on the animal exchange. And it's also important that if someone now takes these eggs from the animal exchange, they can also again determine what um, gender these eggs have. So uh, the, the, so they really have uh, they are have complete flexibility when it comes um, to the gender of the eggs and the gender of um, of the meeples that um, are um, that um, that you can take from these eggs, right? And um, it's also important that besides giving them away, besides placing them in the enclosure, or besides like exchanging them for a meeple, there is like a fourth thing that you can do with these eggs, and that's them to place them on your vivarium. But we will have a look at this in a second. So let us have a look at page 8 of the rule book. Um, here it's all about water. So as I explained pre um, previously in this video, um, there is a new biome, it's called water and it has one difference. It has running costs, it causes running costs. So every um, water tile that you place in your um, zoo um, causes costs. It's important that as long as it is placed on your um, storage space here, it doesn't um, it doesn't cause any costs. But as soon as you place it here with animals inside or not, um, it starts causing costs. So every um, water tile only causes costs of one, and that's also depicted here. Um, it's important that um, water also has one speciality. It's the only biome that you can combine with other biomes. So it's possible to combine um, one enclosure that has water in it and, for example, rainforest. But this um, will be, um, but we will talk about this more here in the semi aquatic species part. But let's go back to the water part. So, as mentioned before, water causes costs. And now, um, and when you place it, then it starts causing costs. And uh, water, like all the biomes, and like the other biomes, also has species. For example, the green sea turtle or the zebra shark. So what is different with these species? So um, as you can see, um, it has here uh, the biome water. And it's important that water species are the only species that can be placed on water. So, for example, when we go here, uh, the South American tapir or the hippo, both are semi-aquatic species. These meeple you cannot place on water. So only meeples of um, pure water species can be placed on water. It's also important that water species, they don't have um, running costs. They don't cause running costs themselves. So the whole running costs are calculated when you calculate the space that uh, a species needs. So if I would um, build an uh, enclosure, for example, for my um, sea turtle, then um, here the, the cost of this enclosure would be four. And if it's only three tiles, it would be three. But it doesn't matter how many sea turtles I place inside, um, the costs are only determined by the, by the water tiles. 
and then um, there is one and uh, one other speciality so as you can see here there are three so the last speciality is that um, the experience works a bit differently with um, water species so um, and maybe you remember it from the base game when you have a species from the same category and you placed it in a previous round then you could already start at um, square two with your cube but here it's even possible to start at square three so how is this possible so if this if for example if we will place the green sea turtle in our zoo and it is the first reptile and the first water species then you start normally at square one but if you already have a reptile or a water species you can start at square two so water species have two categories that influence their experience and if I would for example have already a reptile and a water species then I can already start at square three so um, yeah and that's how the experience works with water species and then it's um, what is also important and I want to mention um, um, in sp um, in um, what I want to highlight is the manatee has only water here because it is a very special animal and it's um, not very closely related to all the other animals and so it has only water and so this means if I already have a water species then I can start on square two um, if it's my first one then I would start on square one also and um, this um, is the last like special part about uh, water animals is um, with the co-species waters um, species um, some of the um, water species allow um, water co-species so if you precisely look here and we will have a closer look even here here is now a drop and not a star as before so this means this species allows a water core species and water core species are a bit special because you don't take them from the animal exchange but you take them from the vivarium so we will have a look at them a bit later when we have a look at the vivarium but just keep in mind some water species allow water core species and you get them from the vivarium so as promised before, let's have a look now at the semi-aquatic species. So how can you see that a species is semi-aquatic? Yeah, that's quite easy when you have a look here at the popularity specs, stats here on animal cards. Now you have these drops, these water drops, and if a species has these water drops here, then it's a semi-aquatic species. So here we have two examples. We have the hippo and we have the South American top here. So how does this work? So when you place a, top, uh, a South American top here, you now have the choice. When you place it with one water tile in its enclosure, then you get two popularity points. If it would have three water tiles in its enclosure, then it would um, give you three popularity points. So it's a bit, it's a bit um, the same as with the snow leopard or the tiger or the American black bear in the base game. Where them, with them it was like this, that if you had one tiger, for example, you had three popularity. If it was uh, two tigers, it was five popularity. And here it's not the number of species uh, of the um, um, specimens, but the number of um, water tiles. So for example, in this example that is here presented on the rule book, you see that this um, top here enclosure has only one and water tile and so you would score two popularity points and if it's the, the, the new species with the most popularity and um, if it's the top here then you would also score two boss and not three. It's also important that um, when you um, put together an enclosure like this so if I would put together an enclosure right then it's, um, it's important that the top here can't stand on the water tile. It can only stand on the um, normal, on its biome, right? And um, so with OM, um, as I explained before, only water species can stand on water tiles. So uh, a semi-aquatic species is not allowed to do that. But this also directly means that water tiles always are free space because you can never place here um, 
a nipple, so it's always free space. It's important, I didn't mention this before, but water also works like every other biome, so this still means that you can play focal points on it, right? So water is completely the same, so focal points you can place on it, but meeples of semi-aquatic species and of any other species can't be placed here, except for water species. So what is also important is um, that um, this also means that when you can make a mix of an enclosure, right, that all, it also means that semi-aquatic species, their costs are the sum of their normal costs. So for example, with the hippo, it's two per occupied enclosure tile plus the costs of uh, the water tiles. So this sum you then add to your running costs. Um, it's also important that some of the some of the semi-aquatic species um, they have uh, the possibility to um, that you can add a normal cost species to um, their enclosure, but also a water cost species. So then they have a drop sign here and a star sign. So um, this I want to um, show you to you a bit more in detail and this we also highlighted here. So if a species has this icon, you already know it from before, you, it's not tolerant to core species. For example, the tiger, because it would eat all the core species. Then this one with the normal star, we know it, it's the zebra, for example, it tolerates a normal core species. If you create a mixed enclosure, a new mixed enclosure, then it gives you an additional um, popularity point. This icon I explained to you before, um, it has the water, um, the water drop. This means a species is tolerant for a water core species. And the water core species you can get from the vivarium and then you get one popularity point from this um, water core species. And then we have the last um, symbol here and that's the uh, uh, a merge, a fusion between this one and this one because it has the star and the drop. And um, this means that this species, for example, the hippo, you can place, for example, the flamingo in its enclosure. Then it gives you an additional, um, gives you an additional popularity point, the bonus point that you know from the base game. But now, if you have in the vivarium also a water core species, you get a point from this water core species, and so you can get up to two points, two um, special points, bonus points from these um, from these core species. Um, and the last thing I want to mention is that even if this biome now, if you have a look at it, is consists from water and dry forest, it's only seen as dry forest. So semi-aquatic enclosures don't count as water um, enclosures. So if you, for example, would build a, a water food booth or a water education booth and you place it here, this has no effect on this water food booth or this water education booth because this counts as a dry forest enclosure with water. So. Um, um, it's only seen as dry forest. The same would be with, for example, the hippo. When you place it as savanna or as rainforest, then it would only be rainforest. Water is only um, so um, it's, um, it's uh, an enclosure is only seen as a water enclosure when it's fully. Um, it's um, it only has um, water tiles in it. So let's have a look at page ten and the vivarium. So every zoo now has a vivarium and it looks like this. In the vivarium, you can place up to nine vivarium species and one clutch of eggs. And then, um, so how do you get this vivarium species? So there is always player number plus two um, of these vivarium species are placed, um, for example, below the animal exchange. And then in autumn, after the building phase, you now have the chance to buy these vivarium species. And you do this again by means of snake draft. I will explain this a bit further in detail. And they cost between one and two money. And these um, species then have effects, so they give you points, right? They, um, we will have a look at um, the points that they give you in a second. It's also important that when you fill these um, these um, areas here and if you fill them you get in the end you get popularity points but we will also have a close look at this in a second and what is also important that even if these species are very very small they still work as any other species in the game so this means 
that they also work together with donors. So for example, if the dry forest donor comes up, they also count to this dry forest donor. Um, they, um, they are um, also affected by event cards. They also trigger event cards. For example, if the dry forest movie um, koala check um, is drawn, then it's also this also counts them um, to the dry forest species. Um, it's also that, uh, for example, if you have a bird, like um, this Lear's Makaf here, then it also uh, gives experience. So see this as any other species in the zoo, uh, like the co-species, like the main species, so they also um, work with all these mechanics that you already know. As mentioned before, these species have different bonuses. So um, we have, um, first we have the instant bonuses. So one instant bonus is for example this one here, where you get directly two education points and you add these points to your education track. Um, so that's one of the instant bonus. Then we have this one here. Um, it gives you directly two bus if you add it to your um, Vivarium. Um, it's important that this bus works like all the other bus, so it doesn't stay forever. It um, is removed, um, reset in winter like all the other bus, but I mean if you are, for example, short for a, one popularity point between um, below a segment where you get way more money, yeah, maybe this is the right way to go. And then we have the combination bonuses. So why are they called combination bonus? Because you always need two to score them. So um, we have the half a popularity point. So if I have half a popularity point in my Vivarium and add another half a popularity point, I can now score one popularity point. It's the same with half the conservation point. So if I have two species with um, half a conservation point, I can add them to, um, to my conservation track. And then we also have these ones here. Maybe you remember this uh, golden droplet here. Um, this are, these are the water core species. And the water core species work like this. I can uh, take them like all the others. I of course have to pay for them. And now I can add them to the vivarium. And now if I already have in my zoo a species, um, for example, this one here, the green sea turtle that uh, allows a uh, water core species, then I now can um, score one popularity point. If I um, don't have a species right now in my zoo, then it just stays here and as soon as I would get a species that ha um, allows such a water core species and can score the popularity point. Same if I already have the main species and add the water core species. And it's important that these water core species, you don't place them in the enclosure. They stay here in the aquarium because for example, they are bred here. And then from time to time, they also release them in the bigger enclosure in the zoo. And so they um, um, swim here around with the green sea turtles. And it's very important that um, these are the only um, um, vivarium species that you have several times in, um, in the bag, in the vivarium species bag. And um, as before, it's not allowed to have the same species twice or three times in your zoo. So um, there are several of these water core species, but you can't have, have the same twice. And now um, we also have breeding bonuses. So that's the last bonus of the discombination bonuses and the instant bonuses, the breeding bonus. It's for example, this turtle here. Um, or the frog here. So how do they work? Always in um, spring, when you roll regular offspring, you also roll the dice for these species. So for each of them, you would roll an individual die. And if you hit a five or a six, then you can add one conservation point to your, um, to your um, conservation track. But it's also important that this, you can only do this once. So once you have done this with a species, you have achieved this, you place one of your cubes here on top. And so it shows you, hey, you already achieved the conservation point with this species, now you can't uh, achieve more conservation points. And yeah, these are all the vivarium species bonuses. Now let's have a look how you get these vivarium um, species. So the vivarium species you get in the vivarium phase, as I mentioned before, there is always player, um, player count plus two species um, placed below the animal exchange. And now how does this work? So if I would be the starting player, I now can decide if I want to buy a species. And this is, takes place after the building phase. So when everyone is done with the building phase, you now have time 
to buy these um, species. And first, if I'm the starting player, I could, can now in, um, decide if I want to buy a species. The first species that I buy um, costs me one money. If I buy a second species, it costs me two money. So for example, I would say, okay, I buy this one, I, um, I take it and I have to directly place it in the vivarium. It's important that I ha need to have a space for it. If I don't have a space for it, I can't take it, I can't buy it. I would take it now and I take it to my vivarium and place it on my vivarium. Now it would be the second player turn. What is important, always there is a, a, a vivarium, when a vivarium species is bought, a new vivarium species is drawn. So always, everyone can always choose from the full set of vivarium species. Now the second player would, for example, say, hey, I don't want a species, so he is out. Um, um, he is completely out um, of this vivarium phase. Then there would be the, the third um, player. She would, for example, buy again a species. And now, um, since um, we only have three players, um, it's now again her turn, turn. So she could now decide to buy a second one, a second species for two money, or she could also pass. So for example, she says, no, I'm fine. And the second player is already out. So now it's again my turn. I could decide, oh yes, I have, no, um, I have still money. I want to buy this, add it to um, my Vivarium and then another species would be drawn. And now the Vivarium phase would be over, right? Um, because only, um, there is only, you can only buy up to two species. So you can buy zero species, one species or two species, but you can never buy more than two species. Now when the Vivarium phase is over, you take all these tiles um, and you place them back in the, in the bag and then you shuffle it and then you draw new four species for the next round. So everybody already knows and um, now for the next round and um, what the vivarium species are that are available right like this it's also important that um, um, the autumn staff actions you can perform them after the vivarium phase or still in the vivarium phase so all autumn staff actions because sometimes you don't know which piece you get and maybe it's important to still do entertainment and get a popularity point so you can decide this during this um, during the vivarium phase if you want to do this or if you don't want to do this yes and this is how you get these um, vivarium species and now, there, are, like with all the other species in the game, there are some placement rules. These are very light placement rules, um, but they are definitely important to keep in mind. So when you place a um, vivarium species in the vivarium, then there um, is one important rule, and this says that every area, so these three lines, these, and this is an area, and this is an area, and this is an area, or like a sector, or how you want to call them, and so when I place here something, it always needs to have a common theme. What is a common theme? So a common theme can be that it um, that all the species here have the same biome. So the same biome would be a common theme. So it could be rainforest, dry forest, savanna, or, um, or um, rainforest, dry forest, savanna, or water, of course, yes. Um, it's also important that I can have the same the same topic several times so I could still place here water That's totally fine as long as the theme there is one theme in one of these areas So and um, we have the biome theme that is possible and um, a second um, and the second option would be for example if I have um, the same bony So here if you have a look, I mean the, there are even two common themes so it's rainforest but also the same bone um, bonus here so the both of them have this special breeding bonus and so um, um, this is a common theme and now if I would have another like a third species then, then for example this one now it would be clear so here is the theme is the breeding bonus but I could of course also place here another of these ones and now it's even two common themes so as long as uh, there is at least one common theme um, it's um, okay like this and it's important so we have biome that's the first one we have um, bonus that's the second one and there is a third one and that's the, um, the category so if the, the animals have the same category for example this would be possible and this so they have nothing in common so they don't have the biome in common they don't have the bonus in common but they have the same category so as 
as long um, and this would be fine. So, but now it's clear that this one here, it has to be a bird. Uh, because all the, um, it, everything else is different, so it has to be a bird here. And that's the only complicated thing about this one. Just always keep in mind to keep your options open. What is also important, when you now buy this PC, for example, I buy this in the first ride, I place it here. Now, what I can do is, I, and I buy, when it's the second round, and I buy a PC, I can place it here. Yes, for example, but I could also place it here or here. That's all possible. So you don't have to finish a row before you start a new one. You can um, start several, several rows. You can have the middle one complete and the others not. That's all possible. It's also important that you don't get minus point if you don't complete a row, right? And because in the end of the game, as I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, in the end of the game, you get um, for every completed row, you get a popularity point. And if I have, uh, for example, completed this one, it gives me one popularity point. And if this one would still look like this, yeah, then I, I, the only thing that happens, I don't get a popularity point, but that's everything, right? It's, um, in, and there is one speciality with the top row, right? Because the top row um, not only needs three species with a common theme, but it also needs a, a full clutch of eggs. So for example, if I would have um, a green sea turtle and I would have offspring with this sea turtle, I take these three eggs and now I can decide do I want to place them in the enclosure or in the vivarium, right? If I place them in the vivarium, it has to be the full clutch, then the three eggs and I place them or the two eggs with the Komodo dragon, I place them here. I, it's now important, I can't take them away anymore. I can't also include them in the closure anymore. They are now, until the end of the game, they are here. And now this row would also give me one popularity point. And um, yeah, that's how the Vivarium works. And um, so have, let's have a look at the last pages of the rulebook. So here we have uh, a, the example with the vivarium species, but I already explained it to you. Here you see all the vivarium species and their names so that you can also learn something. <laughs> and um, here is the solo mode, how, it's ch um, how it is changed. Most of it is pretty much the same, but here at the bottom, it's mainly about the vivarium phase, but I think it's very well explained. So um, just have a look here and it should be perfectly clear how this works. Um, then we have the event cards. So the event cards, the same, most, um, most of the time they are very similar to the ones that you know from the base game. So here we again have these movie uh, event cards that, uh, um, that are connected to the biomes. Here we have the reptile disease that is connected to the reptiles. And here is a new um, card, it's called, um, called Custom Caesar. You already know um, the artwork from the base game. Um, so here it um, says that you get um, this round, all Vivarium species um, you get for free. Um, but it's important that you still can't get more than two Vivarium species per round. Here you um, see a bit uh, who we are and here again very important also for the game, the game overview and as I have explained in the very very beginning of this video, here in red you see all the changes um, the, um, that affect the turnover, like these phases. And yeah, that's how new shores work. Have fun!